On August 31, 2018, agents assigned by the Chinese Communist Party organized some relatives of Christians from the Church of Almighty God, who had fled to South Korea from China to hold a press conference at the Jeju Parliament under the pretext of seeking for relatives. They strongly requested the Korean authorities to deport the displaced Christians back to China. Between September 1 and September 4, Ms. Oh, a pro-Chinese Korean activist, recruited professional demonstrators along with some relatives of Christians from the Church of Almighty God to stage false, spontaneous demonstrations, respectively, at the church's communities in Seoul and Chungcheonbuk-do. And before the Blue House, the executive office of the President of South Korea, during the demonstrations, Mr. Peter Zorer, an Austrian reporter and the executive director of the Forum for Religious Freedom Europe, was one of the witnesses on site. He witnessed the hateful representations of the self-styled demonstrators and had interviews with some Christians from the Church of Almighty God who are in South Korea. He stated, that the Church of Almighty God has been subjected to persecution in China, and that the church members had fled to South Korea and sought asylum there for religious freedom. He also pointed out that it is the Chinese Communist Party that had disrupted their families, while the Church of Almighty God had not been responsible for family disruption. Please join us for the footage of his interviews. Thank God for providing me such an opportunity to share with you my opinion of the farce that CCP has concocted. The reason that I say it is a farce is because my wife can connect with me very easily if she wants to. Let me start from the beginning. I accepted the Kingdom Gospel of Almighty God in April 2012. It is known to all that believers in God are persecuted in China, especially believers in Almighty God. So in March 2013, I came to South Korea for the first time. South Korea is a country of religious freedom. If someone should interfere with others' religious freedom, they would break the law. Anguma, you speak Korean? Yes, I'm Korean Chinese, so I speak Korean. In 2013, because I held a tourist visa, I had to go back and forth every month. In June 2013, when I was preparing to go back to China from South Korea for the third time, one brother told me that the CCP had launched Operation Spring Thunder in China to arrest Christians of the Church of Almighty God. Most of the brothers and sisters in my church were arrested, and I could not go back to China because the CCP had all the information about me, including about my passport. So I asked my wife to hide that very night, and then ask a real estate agent to sell my house. I told my wife, it's too dangerous for you to stay in China, and you can't manage to hide for a long time. You'll be arrested any time. So I tried to persuade her to come to South Korea, where we could believe in God together, work and live together. She came here in June 2014. I went to pick up my wife and my daughter at Incheon Airport. And we rented a house near one of our churches in Gunja Dong, Seoul. At that time, we received some help from the brothers and sisters and bought some daily necessities and finally settled down. Then we found a primary school near a university and helped my daughter to get enrolled. The rumor says that the Church of Almighty God has controlled us and restricted our personal freedom. This is complete nonsense. My wife knows this very clearly. My wife did not believe in God, did not support my service at the church, and later she with our child left me without notice. And she even canceled her cell phone number. 
Thus, I could not find them and did not know where they were. I didn't dare to call my relatives in China to ask about their whereabouts for fear that I might bring danger to my relatives because their phones might possibly be monitored. Several years later, she showed up in a video shot on Jeju Island. I was shocked that she would act in that way. Demonstration, you mean? She was at the demonstration. I saw some news that she was at the press conference held on Jeju Island. But I didn't understand why she didn't come to Seoul if she wanted to see me. She is able to come to Seoul to meet me because her F-4 visa allows her to go anywhere in South Korea. Moreover, she knows my brothers and sisters and our church. She can connect with me in various sorts of ways. In addition, she was an accountant in the past. She has very good sense. So, the only explanation for what happened is she was coerced by CCP to smear and slander the Church of Almighty God. They made a lot of malicious rumors, such as the Church restricts our personal freedom, our minds went wrong, and we abandoned our families. What was most unbearable is that they used loudspeakers to speak blasphemous words against our God yesterday, to smear the man used by the Holy Spirit who leads us. It was a tremendous hurt to all of the believers here. It's even harsher than whipping that may cause physical injury. The trauma we have suffered in our hearts is heavy enough. But it's even more grieving that this incident happened yesterday in South Korea, a country of freedom and democracy. They said that we abandoned our parents. We were unfilial to our parents. But such sayings are against the truth. All my friends and relatives acknowledge that I am very filial to my parents. Why? It's because my parents had chronic illness and I exhausted myself to take care of them. In September 2013, my dad passed away. I really wanted to go back home, but I couldn't because I was on the blacklist of the authorities. And the minute I passed China's customs, and set my feet on the ground of China, I would be arrested. 